All right. Well, hi, everyone. Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you so much for joining us today. And welcome to our session, Getting Your Foot in the Door, Navigating Your Career Ladder. Um, so I hope everyone so far has had an awesome weekend doing virtual STN and hopefully you're not too stressed out with all of the competitions because I know that everybody is doing such amazing work, including all of the teachers and educators involved who are helping out. My name is Elisa Strada and I'm the director for PBS NewsHour Student Reporting Labs. And some of you may know us, we are a national youth journalism network connected to teachers and students all over the country. And we work with the PBS NewsHour and local PBS stations to amplify student produced content. Um, and we also develop resources for teachers and students that cover journalism, video production and media making. And so we know that STN already provides a really great training ground for students interested in film, media, and journalism. And um, I know that some students do it for fun, others do it because they're interested in getting into media and journalism as a career, but there's definitely a spectrum, which is always awesome because it's never one size fits all. And, um, you know, I think no matter what you're learning, uh, it's valuable skills that can be applied to lots of different competitive jobs in the future. And so like STN, Student Reporting Labs provides a really great training ground for students interested in the field. And we also try to create connections to different job opportunities like internships or entry level positions. So one thing that I love about my job is that I get to connect students to industry professionals who get to provide amazing mentorship and coaching. And so today you're gonna to be hearing from three early career professionals who also happen to be Student Reporting Labs alumni about how they've been navigating their careers so far. Um, and each of them has different levels of experience. And so I'm so excited for them to just share their stories about where they are, where they wanna go, the good, the bad, and the ugly of it all. And we also wanna hear your questions. So please chat with us, um, or if you wanna drop your cues in the Q&A, um, you can do it in that option as well. But we wanna hear from you. We wanna interact with you. And we wanna answer as many questions as you have about this area. And so in the end, we hope that you walk away with some good tips and advice about how to get into journalism, media, and video production. Um, all right, so why don't we start off by doing some introductions and let's start with you, Laura, if you can tell us who you are, where you live and what you're currently doing right now. No, absolutely. So I'm Laura Strum. I live in New York City and I'm an assistant editor with The Atlantic Magazine on their digital side. Awesome. And how about you, Xavier? So I'm Xavier Dominguez. I live in Las Cruces, New Mexico, and I'm a freshman at New Mexico State University. And I'm majoring in journalism and mass communications. And I also am a visual specialist for the student newspaper for the NMSU Roundup. Amazing. Um, and Jayla. Hey everyone, I'm Jayla. I'm from Maryland and I'm currently a um, production assistant with SRL. Awesome, thank you all so much. Um, so I thought that we could kind of jump in before we do our official conversation by playing a little game just to see how much we know about the current state of our field. So we can pass these slides and um, we can go back to them in a second. But first, I wanted to ask this question. And the way that we're going to play this is I'm going to re read the question out loud. And then if you're um, attending, please uh, let us know what you think the answer is, whether it's A, B or C. So um, I'm going to ask the question to the panelist. And then again, for those of you who are here, please let us know what you think the answer is. So employment, first question, employment in media and communication occupations is projected to grow by how much from 2019 to 2029? I'll read it one more time. Employment, so jobs in media and communication occupations is projected to grow by how much in the next 10 years? Is it 6%, 12%, or 4%? All right, throwing it out to our panelists first. Um, anybody want to say it first, what they think? B, 12%. 12%, anybody else? I think it's either A or B. Okay, I'm going to go, I'm going to go with B, go big or go home. Awesome, I love that. So the correct answer is actually 
4%. Now, it doesn't seem like that much, but actually demand for media and communications jobs is, is expected to grow because of the need to create and edit and disseminate info on a lot of different platforms that we're seeing um, come up you know, all of the time, like the latest you can think of like Snapchat, TikTok, Instagram. Um, so even though it's not as much as may maybe a lot of you thought, 4% is still pretty significant. I think when I looked it up on the US Bureau of Labor Statistics, it was equivalent to about 42,000 jobs. All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, which occupation in media and communications has the highest median pay as of 2019, according to the US Bureau of Labor Statistics? Is it A, technical writers, B, public relations specialist, or C, photographers? I feel like we, all, we always wanna know how much certain jobs get paid, right? We wanna make money. What do you guys think? I'm gonna have to go with A. Yeah, I, I'm A. <laughs> Ditto. All right, uh, anybody in the audience wanna take a guess, A, B, or C? Let's see. A. Man, you guys are good. Yeah, that was the correct answer. Technical writers, the median pay as of 2019 is 72,850. And uh, the job description for that is people who prepare things like instruction manuals, how-to guides, um, you know, complex information that needs to be com uh, communicated in a cohesive uh, way. So the second is public relations at 61,000 and then photographers at the bottom, unfortunately, they have the lowest median pay, which is 36,000. Um, but again, like I said earlier, it's never one size fits all. It really just depends on where you are and what you're doing. Um, you know, your pay would probably be based on that. So that's just the median pay. All right, last question. What is one of the newest types of jobs in journalism? Is it A, social media manager, B, impact editor, or C, product designer? I feel like this might be like a little bit of a trick question, but what do you guys think? And please in the audience, let us know what you think as well. I'm definitely thinking either A or B. I'm gonna go with B. We actually just hired someone with that title, so. Maybe oh, wow. B. I'm gonna go with A just because I do not know what an impact editor is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good guess. Uh, so the correct answer is B, impact editor. But I will have to say this is that's a caveat um, with like social media manager and product designer are actually still pretty new occupations in media and communications. If you think about the last 10 to 15 years, 15 years ago, there wasn't such a role as a social media manager and product designer, I think product manager, that's a title and a job that's been around for a while, but as it relates to journalism and communications, it's definitely um, changed or this new role product designer um, is more, uh, I would say, important to a lot of news organizations because there are a lot of news products that are being created to cater to all different consumer needs and also where they are and where they're consuming their information. Um, but impact editor, that is the newest one um, that I have found and that I have seen um, listed because it's all about how stories and reporters interact with others to to spark change during and after the reporting process. So the idea of like tracking how journalism is making an impact is definitely something that's new and um, really exciting too. Um, so cool, well, great job guys. I wasn't keeping score, but I feel like you guys all did great. <laughs> Um, all right, so thank you all so much for playing along. So now let's jump into the conversation. So my first question for all of you, and we'll start with Laura, if you could answer this question first. So right now you're actively working in different, you know, journalism spaces. Right now you're specifically at the Atlantic, but when you were growing up, was there anything else that you wanted to be? No, that's a really great question. And I think the short answer is no. I was always very clear that I wanted to be in news, but I will say that, you know, the, the path to figuring out news was what was going to allow me to be happy was kind of varied. I thought I was going to do something with, you know, advocacy, something with, with how we tell stories, narrative storytelling, and maybe something with the arts and journalism was the one area that kind of encompassed all of those three things. So it kind of all snowballed together. Yeah, that's really amazing. And uh, what about you, Jayla? 
Yeah, so actually my journey kind of started off with me wanting to be an actress. Um, I just love storytelling so much. And the cool thing about the storytelling, storytelling realm is that there's so many different mediums and it really gives you an opportunity to try and really learn everything. Um, and you know, that's kind of how I got into journalism. So yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, there's never a straight path. I feel like that's something that it took me way too long to learn when I was growing up and getting into the field is that there really is no straight trajectory. It can go a lot of different ways. Um, and I think like nowadays, especially with technology, we get the freedom to do more of, of what we really love to do. Xavier, what about you? So for me, I really like counting money as weird as it is to say. Um, so maybe like accounting until I started really taking media classes at an early age in middle school. And that's kind of what like defined my path into journalism. Yeah. And do you consider uh, stories about finance something that you like to do? Um, it's kind of shifted. I'm more on like education, like how that's impacting everyone, but more of just like not to say bigger issues, but something that's really impacting me because like finances and everything, um, it's just a lot of numbers for me. <laughs> and so, yeah. Yeah, there's a big thing in journalism uh, and especially investigative journalism, like you always want to follow the money. Um, it will lead, lead you to some, some answers always. Um, so Laura, I want to go back to you. You mentioned that this is something that kind of hit you when you were young, that you really wanted to pursue this field. Is there um, another, like a specific moment or moments in your life, especially when you were going to middle school, high school, and then eventually college that made you realize like, oh man, this is something that I want to do. And hey, I could get paid for it. Yeah. So I think that to preface this statement, my mother was in broadcast news for 10 years before she pivoted and became a dance teacher. So I always say that like news was in our blood. It was just kind of something that was always there. Um, so I grew up watching things like Mary Tyler Moore. She was a broadcast journalist watching Murphy Brown. She was also a journalist. And I think that kind of showed me that like, okay, if women are going to do something with their lives, they can do that in journalism. So I think that priming existed very young, you know, watching Nick at night where they used to have those reruns on. Um, and then when I was six years old, 9-11 happened. And I think that was a major moment in my understanding of how news can bring communities together. I mean, this was a horrible thing, right? But it happened on a mass scale and the only people that had answers were newscasters. You know, you were watching the news, you were reading the news, you were just consuming anything you could. And I remember thinking very young, I wanna be a part of that in the future. Wow, that's really powerful. Um, and Xavier, could you, can you point to anything in your life that happened that made you realize that this is something that you wanted to pursue more seriously? So it would definitely have to be at the Academy with SRL. Um, whenever I did this story about Youth Coalition trying to lower the voting age, um, just getting to talk to them and like just hearing their story and how dedicated they were to doing that, I was just like, wow. And just like all the experiences. And then they even wrote us a little letter saying, thank you so much for telling our story. And it was, it just like hit me home just because of them like saying, thank you for giving us a voice and a platform. And so I was like, maybe I can start doing this more. And so I took that with me back home after the Academy and it just really has kind of um, spiraled from there. Yeah, and for those who are attending who are not familiar, Student Reporting Labs has a yearly academy. Actually, we have applications are open right now. So if your school is also involved in Student Reporting Labs, you should totally apply, even though it's virtual this year. But hopefully next year we can get back together in person. But it's like a week-long intensive. It's like a boot camp for journalism and video production where you students from all across the country come to Washington DC and work on stories together and learn about the process and the challenges and ultimately are able to share a story and take that story home with them um, to add to their portfolio or to their school, um, you know, the things that they're doing for their school. Um, so I had no idea, Xavier, that's really amazing to hear that that's a moment that really, you know, changed your perspective on, on potentially what you wanted to pursue. Um, and Jayla, so you just graduated high school recently and um, you're now currently working as a production assistant for student reporting labs. And you know, you're also trying to figure things out. So for you, what is it that you um, enjoy doing at work and what are the skills that you think will help you um, down the road? Yeah, so I, when I first started working as a production assistant, I, I had editing experience, but I, it wasn't something that I was like, super, you know, 
I wasn't really super confident in my abilities. I had done a lot of other things in the production realm. Um, but one of my favorite things now is editing. I think I've become such a better editor. Um, and I think it definitely is because I've gotten to um, strengthen my skills on the little bitty parts of editing, like, you know, sound and things that like, I really wasn't like focusing on before. Um, so yeah, and then I also, I love being um, in front of the camera. I've done a bunch of things like that as well. So yeah. Yeah, and I think that something that all of you have in common is that you really um, started to get going and do projects in high school. And I think that that's something that is also um, really tangible and it's connected to what STN does, which is um, you know provide that training ground, as I said before. So for each of you, and we'll come back to Laura first, what was the, the value of being able to do some work in high school that contributed to those like, like initial pieces on your resume or your portfolio that helped you in the long run? No, absolutely. I mean, I think one of my, I'm actually, I'm sure my first internship was with Student Reporting Labs and it was kind of like a dry run and understanding what it takes to do this. And I think being able to be like 15, 16 when you're still finding out about yourself, um, if you have that in you was super helpful. And then I was also producing work. Like it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, huge stories, but it was things that I was able to point to a future employer and say, I did this thing. Like I can do this. I'm telling you, I can do this. Here's the proof. So I think it was definitely very helpful in, you know, getting into the, the sense of, of what you have to do in journalism, which is show that you can do something as opposed to tell someone that you can. Right. Kind of taking it out of the classroom a little bit. Exactly that. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, what about you, Jayla? What about your high school experiences? Yeah, so I did everything in high school. Um, this is not an exaggeration. I did almost every single art and film and storytelling class my school offered, programs even outside of school. Um, and I did internships with the SRL. I did, you know, fe festivals and competition. And I think through that, like Laura said, I proved myself to people that I really wanted to do this. And, um, and then eventually my teachers and people started reaching out to me with opportunities. So that's a really good piece of advice that you really just want to, especially if you find something that you're passionate about, um, see how you can go all in um, and and eventually opportunities will start to come up for you. Xavier, what about you? What did you, what did you do in high school? So yeah, kind of like going off Laura and Jayla, I did everything. Um, I even attended STN one year um, with the SRL and I just applied to as many like internships or fellowships that I possibly can. And I just really feel like getting your foot in the door as early as you can is really just gonna set you apart from someone else. And just like how um, Alicia was just saying, the drive and motivation you have is really just gonna show your work, especially to an employer. Um, you can just say, I have this and I started like so young and I was able to go with a company and that's like actually who wanted me. And although you're young, it doesn't really necessarily mean that you're different from anyone else. Like it just shows how, just how motivated you are in that career and what you wanna do and that you're serious about it. And what does it feel like to be on the other side, Xavier, now that you're like you used to go to STN and now you're yeah, now you're in college on the other side? How does that feel? Um, it's kind of weird not doing crazy eights. I know that they just got done with crazy eights. So I know how it is, how the competition is. You don't know if your like laptop's going to crash or anything. So I really give everyone credit just because we're in a pandemic and they're doing all these crazy competitions. And so I, it just honestly motivates me to keep on doing more as just seeing all of these like young journalists doing what they're doing. Absolutely. Here, here. Okay, so we have our first question and I wanted to go ahead and share that now from Ber Bergen Bergen. I apologize if I'm pronouncing your name incorrectly. Um, but so they are asking, how important do you feel college is for this industry? What about going straight into an internship? That's a really great question. Um, who wants to answer first? Any volunteers? I think I can answer because that's actually exactly what I did. <laughs> yeah, go for it, Jayla. I, I think I really cannot specifically speak to like 
um, I could speak to the value of going into your internship straight away. Maybe not so much like, you know, not going into college because I haven't seen like, I guess more so I could speak to um, the value. Um, it was such a great decision for me. Um, I got to learn so much. I know this generation is so, um, I don't know, like passionate and we're, I don't know, we're kind of doing things a little bit differently, um, but I got so much value out of it, work experience, um, things that I could put on my resume. Um, so I definitely do not regret it. I think it's, it's valuable, especially if you're not really sure what you want to do yet and you kind of just want to dabble around and you know try out the different mediums. Um, but yeah, so I think, I definitely do recommend it, um, but it's all up to the specific person and what will be best for you in your journey, so. Yeah, and do you think that, so like, um, as you described, you graduated high school and you started interning immediately with Student Reporting Labs with us, um, and now you're a production assistant. Is school something that you're still thinking about? How has that changed in the last year? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Um, I love learning and I definitely want to further my education. I think I just needed that sort of time to just figure things out. Um, but I think that, um, sorry, can you repeat the question? I kind of like got off track a little bit. No, no, that's okay. Um, are you still thinking about going, uh, going to college? Yeah, so I definitely am thinking about going to college. Now that I'm in the professional kind of realm I see the value of it um and it wasn't ever something that I kind of liked was like oh I'm never going to do this um I guess before I just needed time um but I think there is so much value in college it's learning it's you know being able to work on projects if you haven't had that experience in high school um I know us like we're blessed to have had SRL and like do other things like that um but if you are really interested in journalism and film and video um college might be a really good choice for that um to get that experience yeah and ultimately it's about the combination of work experience right and connections i think that's also really important um as you're thinking about what's going to be really the best choice for you um jayla just to go back to your point that it's uh everybody has an individual journey um so that's awesome i want to go to laura if you uh do you have a, an answer for that question as well to the idea of you know the value of college um, before entering journalism, um, I would say it depends on your situation. I think a lot of things and a lot of things are different than when I was eighteen. I mean, the the cult of personality and branding yourself as an individual going into the field is a little bit bigger than it was five six years ago. To kind of date myself for how old I am now, but um, I personally saw a lot of value in going to college because I wanted to go and do journalism in a different city. And college was the medium in which to do that. And it also provided a safe space for me to, to fail. You know, when you blow a deadline in college, you lose a letter grade. When you blow a deadline in real life, you lose your job, possibly. So it was a really safe space for me to do that. And I was fortunate to have the funding from scholarships to do so. So I think it depends on, again, on who you are, but also if you want to really have a safe space to figure out a lot of different things, college can be that for you. Um, obviously look at your financial situation, but if it's possible, I would say do it. Yeah, and Xavier, you're in college right now. Um, and what is that experience like so far for you? So like how everyone said, it just really depends on the individual and like what you want to do. But for me, um, so I'm currently a freshman majoring in journalism. And so it's kind of been best of both worlds. Um, right now due to the pandemic, there's not a lot we can do, but I can say that I have done an internship, especially my first semester going into college. And so balancing both of them out is really great. And it just, like everyone said, depends on the individual. I personally see going to college first and instead of just jumping in, like Laura said, finding a safe space, experimenting what you wanna do, whether that's broadcast, print, digital, um, even public relations or any, uh, anything else in the media field. And so it honestly just depends on you. If you really think that college isn't the best bet for you, that's okay. Go try out, go make connections. But also in college, you can make your connections. Like I interact with my peers talking about journalism. One of them's doing something in film or you just get that diverse scale and spectrum of where everyone's at and what they wanna do. And so it really just depends on the individual, but I say just, it makes the best of both worlds of whether or not you wanna go or just making those connections. Yeah, that's awesome. I feel like everybody has shared, you know, just a, a, 
a, a good spectrum of possibilities and options um, that anybody who is interested can think about. So I love that we're getting so many questions. So I, let's just keep going with it. Um, so we have a question from Bill. Um, so his question is, as young professionals, where did you get your news before entering the industry? Um, so yeah, so where where were you reading uh, the news before you actually started working for the news? Um, let's go back to Laura for that one first. Yeah, that's kind of a hard question because I feel like news has always just been everywhere for me. Like it's just always been a part of my life. Like I was watching it on TV with my mother. I was, you know, reading it in the newspaper with my grandfather. I was, you know, looking it up on, you know, the the Razor cell phone where it cost a ton of money to Google something like back when I was 14, 15. So I would say it's always been a mixture of every single medium where news is available. So whether I was watching broadcast news or reading the news in the outlets that, you know, magazine journalism was huge for me. I now work at the Atlantic. Um, so I used to read like the New Yorker, the Atlantic, um, I'm forgetting the other magazine that was very popular. It's since closed, but just a sort a mixture of everywhere. I will say it wasn't until I was, you know, 18 or 20 that I really started considering the news value that comes from social media. I don't think I was like part of that early Twitter, early Facebook move. So it really was more broadcast and print until, you know, I, I entered my 20s and it started just being this everywhere. Yeah, and um, Bill, the second part of his question is related to social media. As social media becomes the outlet of choice for young people to get their news, how can the quote unquote traditional news sources like the News Hour break through the noise of sources that don't hold themselves to the high standards of journalistic ethics? So I think that's also, um, you know, related to the misinformation, disinformation um, epidemic that we're currently in, and that it is challenging to sometimes find reliable sources unless you have the tools and skills to do so. Um, so Xavier, if you could first answer the, the first part of his questions, I'd love to hear where you were getting your news before you started do, doing news. Um, and then how do you find reliable sources? So for me, while growing up, I grew up in like the digital age. And so um, I really found my news through the TV. I would always come home after school and my mom would be playing um, the news at four and everything. And so that was just kind of where I got my news, especially late at night. Um, you know, while I was growing up, there was a lot of like, not to get like really dark, but a lot of mass shootings happening, everything with like um, President Barack Obama with politics. And I, that's how I really got my news. I didn't really have a phone to look at my news. So I really relied on my local news. And I think um, local news has a bit, um, big impact on what has happening, um, especially where you're at. And then for the second question, reliable sources for stories or for interviews? For news, like where do you get your news now? Oh, so yeah, so I get my news now um, usually from my smartphone, like social media. Um, I just really trust certain outlets because there are some outlets that are kind of biased towards one another, but I just really think um, just checking where the news is from and how it's laid out, I think as a journalist, um, to distinguish what's a bias um, news article compared to what's not and just kind of um, seeing who are the sources and just seeing is both sides of the story told and that's kind of how I get my news now is just through social media especially just because just because it's so quick um, something can be breaking like I think it was yesterday or two days ago whenever the senate voted to acquit Donald Trump it was so quick once the vote all this um, major news organizations were sharing everything that happened so for me, just social media. Yeah, and I think that um, especially if you're in, uh, studying journalism in school, something that you are able to equip yourself with is the idea of like you can be your own fact checker because even the most trusted news organizations can make mistakes and that's okay. But it's about that transparency that they're able to, to show and to that trust that they're able to build with readers. Um, and it's not easy, but I think especially as a student journalist or or student media maker, it's important to, to understand that and to know that it's not black or white necessarily all the time, but it's about really understanding how to how to find those facts and how to understand the nuances and, and all of the different stories that are that are written out there and published. Um, and um, so we have another question, but I'd love Jayla just to hear quickly from you where um, where you got your news when you were growing up. Yes. Um, well, yeah, just like um, Laura and Xavier said, I got really, I'm, my generation is the digital age and 
Um, I get really got my news from everywhere. Um, I also grew up in local news, so watching that. Um, but in terms of how you can, you know, um, make sure that your sources are reliable, there's a lot of things that you can do. And we talk about that a lot with SRL. Um, you can compare different sources, look at who, what the source, who the source is, look at the author. Um, there are a lot of things that you can do in, in this sort of time that we're in. It's really hard to know um, which sources can be reliable um, and which ones are not. There's so much information coming at us all the time. Um, but there, it, those are a couple of tips that you can do and there's so many more, um, but yeah, just, Double check, double check, double check. Yeah, good advice for anybody, no matter what, what age you are. Um, okay, so we have a, another question from Woolman Wilder. I apologize again if I'm getting your name wrong, but um, so this is going back to real, the uh, internship question. So how hard was it to get an internship and what did you have to do to stand out from everyone else who was applying to get that internship? That's such a relatable question. Um, so who would like to volunteer to answer that first? Yes, Xavier. So I can speak on that because I've really been recently in the past years, I've applied to a lot of internships. And so I would say definitely when you're applying, put everything that you've done, whether if you think it's good or not, because um, it, it might be good to someone else. And especially, so most of the time, an internship is going to require some form of a reel or portfolio. And so ju just definitely save all your work that you did. I know for me, whenever I did that, I saved everything I did, whether or not it was good or bad. And so I would make usually a reel because I'm more of a video person. And so basically just, just showing what I can do compared to someone else. And usually whenever I apply to a conference or for an internship or a fellowship, um, whenever it usually requires an essay, and so I, I just describe how much journalism has changed my life and just really showing everything that you can do, whether if you think you're good or not at it, it just really shows how versatile you are. And I think that's really what a lot of employers are looking um, for multimedia journalists, whether if you can do graphics, you can report, you can do editing at the same time and just kind of showing how much um, characteristics, characteristics you have, sorry, and just showing just really what you wanna do and how motivated you are for it. Right, it sounds like honesty and transparency is also really helpful there because there could be skills that you may not have yet, but the willingness to learn, I think goes a long way, especially when it comes to getting an internship. Um, uh, Jayla, I saw you on mute. Did you wanna to add to that? Um, so like I said before, my first internship was with SRL and um, thankfully I had you know worked with them previously. Um, but I think going back to what we said about like, I just, I did everything in high school. I did as many projects with SRL as I could. And I think I kind of um, proved myself. And so when I was, you know, reaching out for internship opportunities, I think that helped me a lot. Yeah, and this could also not just be um, a good advice for internship, but also for your first jobs uh, outside of school and college. And Laura, what was that experience like for you? applying for my first job. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the the best answer here is that I actually got my first job with the PBS News Hour through connections that I had with Student Reporting Labs. So, you know, I'm not a plant, that's a true story. Um, but I think that's a, the real benefit in getting an internship or getting a job is really just um, the connections you make that happen organically. Like, I'm not saying go and like shake as many hands as you can at a mixer or, you know, go to every fundraising event or networking event that your school has. It's just every single job I've gotten has been through either a professor that I had a genuine connection with, you know, an internship where fortunately my work product was viewed as good. And so they thought of me when they needed someone to continue doing work. So um, I think there's incredible value to really like the FaceTime that you can get with people who are doing, who are in a position to hire you in the future. And I know that's hard during a pandemic. So take that with a grain of salt, but you can reach out to people on LinkedIn, which I have seen friends do with great success. Yeah. And I was going to add as a follow-up, um, you know, I think that for a lot of people networking can be intimidating and it can be really hard. Do you have any advice for, um, for, for students who are facing that challenge? Yeah, absolutely. I, I very much dislike networking. I feel like it's, um, it's a lot of emotional labor. And so I was very resistant to the idea of it when I first got started in news. And the way I think about it now is it's not networking, it's making new friends. 
Like I had to really change my mindset and think of this as like, even if nothing comes of this, if I have learned, you know, something about this person or we have connected over this shared experience and this is something that is of value. Um, and I know that like cold reaching out on LinkedIn is a form of networking, but I've always kind of reached out to like friends of friends or like third tier connections and just said, hey, you and I both know so-and-so. I'd love to just, you know, pick your brain about X subject. Can we just talk for 10 minutes? And if they say yes, great. If they say no, you've lost nothing. Yeah, and I think there's also a hesitancy around doing that kind of cold outreach because um, the person doing it may think like, oh, you know, this the other person is probably gonna know that like, they think that I just want the job or something. But I think um, something that I too have learned um, is that if you just reach out with a genuine interest in learning more about that person and their career and their job, it could down the road, not now, but maybe in the future, open up doors that wouldn't open if you hadn't made that push to do a cold introduction for yourself. Um, would you guys agree with that? Absolutely. Yeah, I definitely think it starts with the people around you. I'm, I'm definitely not the type of person that's like, oh, I just want to reach out to the per this person just for a job. Like that, when I first heard about networking, it was like, oh my gosh, like this is a lot. And but I couldn't agree more that it definitely starts with the people around you, and um, just starting with getting to know, you know, what that person does, and just like you were saying, Elise, um, I think could definitely help a lot. You definitely have to change your mindset about it, like Laura was saying. Yeah. And so we have one other question and it's related to, I think, if I'm interpreting this right, about a side hustle. So does anybody do jobs outside of their main job or internship? The, the original question is, have you guys been able to maintain any other jobs on the side of your journalism jobs and internships? Um. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily say it was like a job. I mean, like I obviously since I love film, I try to like, you know, do as many um, things I can in that realm. Um, but every now and then I like get an opportunity to work on a film set for a short film um, and do different things like that. So yes, I've been able to do that. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily say it, it's like a, I guess you could say it's a side hustle really, but um, yeah, so I have. I definitely have. Um, in my first couple of jobs as a journalist, I was always also a waitress because there was no way to kind of make ends meet unless I was doing something else um, to help me make money. So I always did something in the hospitality industry, something I taught dance classes for a little while. I babysat. So I always did that. Um, and now when I find that I'm, you know, either seeking to make a little bit of extra side money or just develop a new skill, I freelance. So I've written for college magazines, college marketing magazines. I've written for you know, online arts publications, anything that will give me, you know, hope ideally a dollar a word, but I'll do it for a penny a word if that's all that's available. But yes, I've always had a side hustle. <laughs> yeah. And it's, I think those are uh, really important at the beginning of your career too. What about you, Xavier? No, yeah, I definitely agree. Actually, kind of the same thing with Laura. Um, I was a game room attendant while I was still doing, um, my at Chuck E. Cheese <laughs> um, while I was doing um, journalism. And I feel like just having that side hustle, like even photography, I used to do that with senior photography, um, just a quick photo, just as much money as you can make, just because you do like at the end of the day, we all want to buy something or pay bills. And so I feel like while you're still doing, doing a journalism job or internship, you can also be doing something else um, just to help you and just kind of feeling the balance of work and your life is just really um, vital in what you're trying to do. So yes, definitely have had a side hustle and I still do have a side hustle. <laughs> Amazing, love it. So um, we had such great audience questions. Going back to something that I think comes up a lot for, um, for me when I talk to students is, you know, should you have a LinkedIn profile and why is having a portfolio, especially in media and communications fields, um, why is that important? And from your personal experience, how has having those things helped you? Um, let's go to Jayla first. Yeah, so I would say that having LinkedIn is, is very um, important and helpful. I have one definitely needs to be updated but um, it, it goes back to networking um, and just getting in the, the mindset of that professional kind of realm. I, I, right after high school, like I talked about, I got my first internship and it was, 
the transition into that from doing this in high school to like actually doing it, you know, as a job was difficult for me. Um, but doing things like LinkedIn and really getting my mindset, building my portfolio um, definitely helped. Um, and sorry, Elise, what was the second part of the question? No, I think you answered both of it. Um, that having that portfolio can be super helpful, especially if you're um, trying to land a job. What about for you, Laura? No, yes, I was an early, I was an early, I, I was in favor of LinkedIn very early on. I think I had one in high school um, and I maintain, I maintain it pretty regularly because I like using LinkedIn to look at other people's career trajectory and figure out how I could possibly do what they're doing or do a similar thing to what they've done. And I also like having that digital footprint be there. So when you Google me, you find my Twitter, you find my author bio, you find my LinkedIn. And I think that's very important when you're kind of figuring out who you are online and how that relates to who you are in real life. Um, so I loved having LinkedIn for that. And I also love having a personal website, which has undergone several renovations since I was like 15 and first built one using like, you know, a variation of Tumblr. Um, but it's very helpful when you're applying to jobs because you can just put your website link in there. Like if they say, do you have four clips? Yes, they do click this link, which is a great feeling. And I also think having a, a reel is helpful for you as a journalist because you can look back at everything you've done. Like, I don't know if anyone here has ever just watched their own reel and been like, I'm actually not half bad at this, um, which is a great feeling when you're trying to apply for jobs. Absolutely. Anything you'd like to add, Xavier, to that point about the importance of things like LinkedIn and portfolios? Yeah, so I kind of just view my LinkedIn as a resume. Once I um, really made my LinkedIn, I actually like and put everything down. Um, I actually had gotten someone to request me um, and just kind of like interacting for like basically on a college level, your other peers have LinkedIn's. And so you get to connect with them and just also like send a quick chat. Hey, like, how do you like, how do you do this? Or like, what are you doing right now to um, like third years, fourth years, so like junior seniors. Um, and then also for a portfolio, just putting everything you have. I know definitely with my portfolio was how I landed the job I currently have. Um, just that what set me apart from others, because usually they hire um, upperclassmen since I'm um, barely a freshman. So it kind of just set me apart showing that, look, this is what I can do at an early age because I got started early. And now um, this is why you should hire me. Amazing. Um, okay, so we have only a couple of minutes left. And so I thought that for our last question, it can be like a quick fire. Um, and this is something that um, I experienced when I, I went to grad school for journalism, and I was in my first job as a producer at New York One, which is a local station in, in New York City. And I remember there was a tour of students coming through front with a professor of mine from grad school and he I was like about to go on a shoot in the city and he stopped me and he was like Elise 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 do you have any advice for these group of students who are thinking about jobs here and I was like so flustered I was like I can't believe that you're asking me this question but I'm gonna put all of you guys on the spot just like I did just like that professor did for me so if you could say one piece of advice or share one piece of advice for everybody here and everybody who's gonna be watching this recording about how to um, get your foot in the door, what would that piece of advice be? Um, let's start with, uh, back to you, Xavier. What would be your piece of advice? Um, I tell everyone this, but make a portfolio, save everything you have, make a real, and apply to as many internships, fellowships, and scholarships you have even now early on to just get your foot in the door and don't be scared to take risks, to do everything you can. Awesome, what about you, Jayla? Mine would be ask, ask, ask. There are people that want to give you opportunities, want to teach you. They can't read your mind, ask them. Um, and also networking would be a really good one, but yeah. Amazing. Uh, all right, let's round it out. What about you, Laura? I think it's very simple. Trust yourself. If you want it badly enough, if you believe in this industry the way I assume everyone here does, then trust that you can do it and go out there and do it. Fantastic. That was so incredible. Thank you all so much for taking the time today to share all of your insights and your experiences with us. Um, for everybody who's attending STN, um, you guys are amazing. I can't wait to continue seeing the great work that you're doing and the impact that you're making in this world. Um, so Jayla, Xavier, Laura, one more time, thank you so much. And thank you to everybody at STN. Thank you. All right, we'll, we'll sign off and say bye. Bye everyone. Thank you so much.